what is going on my awesome army and welcome back to the vlog you are truly the broken prophet here and today we are going to talk about one of my favorite spirits to work with in the hoodoo religion and it is john the conqueror or is it hi john the conqueror they're not the same and we're going to learn why very soon but first i want to give a very special shout out and thanks to shalanda nura mk and carla thank you for your donations helping to keep the hoodoo dream alive down here at hoodoo central 2.0 and spreading across the globe to parts unknown thank you so much and the rest of you hey follow the leaders run those donations i really really would appreciate it all right guys so let's talk about john the conqueror or hi john the conqueror before we get into but before we get into that specifically we have to get into because a lot of you have been working with hi john wrong <clears throat> and i don't blame a lot of you because you've been getting the wrong information a lot of times unintentionally because a lot of times people don't know what they don't know case in point i tell you guys all the time Hoodoo was born from the American South, and the South has its own culture. A lot of times we have our own language, and if you're not aware of that, you may think you're hearing one thing when in reality we're saying something totally, totally different. Um, for instance, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. And a lot of the Hoodoo that you see now, just let me back it up a bit, a lot of the Hoodoo that you see now comes from one source and that source is harry middleton hyatt a couple of huge companies in hoodoo at least have built their entire reputation off of harry middleton hyatt harry hyatt was a white minister who for some reason took it upon himself to venture throughout the south wanting to chronicle <coughs> african-american folk magic as he coined it hoodoo voodoo conjure all the different terms right so he traveled throughout the south with money in hand he found a guide a lot of times it was a taxi driver or something like that he asked about a root worker a conjure doctor whatever they said yeah i know someone they took them there he had his trusty tape recorder he asked them questions they answered it to his credit i do believe that he never intended for this to become a how-to manual of hoodoo. He was what now we would consider a cultural anthropologist. He just found it interesting and took it upon himself to want to document it. It's only the marketeers who decided to turn his workings in, well, his, yeah, his writings, workings, whatever, into a hoodoo how-to manual. And they've profited off of it. But the thing is, <laughs> what nobody wants to address is the fact that we are some very secretive and cliquish people down south we will be very polite to you and while we're cussing you to your face if you ever heard a southern person say oh bless their heart you know we ain't trying to bless your heart you know we not you know that's like that's like saying oh it'll be all right if you if you from the hood you know what that means I was in line at the post office one time and someone walked in and it was a long line because there's always a long line at the post office, right? And someone walked in, hey, could, um, the blue the blue van is kind of blocking me in a little bit. Could somebody come move? And somebody said, it'll be all right. You know what that means. That means F them, right? I'm not getting out this line to move my car. <clears throat> bless your heart means the same thing. Like, oh, such and such. Oh, bless their heart. You know what that means. And that is just rampant in the in the South. We, like we just use terminology that is kind of cussing you, but it ain't cussing you, right? For people to think that a white minister back in those days could go in the into the South and come away with legitimate workings is preposterous. It is preposterous. For people to, I mean, nowadays it's hard for somebody to give you a legitimate work if they don't know you, right? So I say that to say a lot of the workings that came away were false, 
And the ones that were legitimate were coded. But people weren't intentionally coding them. They were just speaking Southern speak. For instance, if you, <laughs> this isn't working. If I told you in order to harm your, en your enemy, you're going to need a spider, two scorpions, and two brown eggs. You probably get it, right? You think, wow, prophet told me I'm going to need a spider, two scorpions, and two brown eggs. <clears throat> and you would gather your ingredients and follow it to the letter and come out wrong. Why would you come out wrong? Well, down here, this is a spider. I don't know why. It just is. A scorpion is a, is a little blue lizard down here. Come on, my southern folks. Y'all know the little blue lizard with the, with the, long, with the long tail. It's actually a, a, a blue striped skink, I think. Look it up. And a brown egg is a penny. I'm speaking English, but I'm speaking Southern speak. I'm, I'm giving you the ingredients, but you're hearing something totally different and you're doing something. And a lot of people are doing that when it comes to working with John the Conqueror <coughs> because you don't understand this is a John the Conqueror root. High John the Conqueror is a spirit. Also this, but a little different. To learn how to work with John the Conqueror, you've got to learn which one do I need for this work. Do I need John the Conqueror root or do I need High John the Conqueror? Why is High John different from John the Conqueror root? Again, we're talking about Southern speak. When you look at the Sheriff's Department, Right. You've got one sheriff and a bunch of deputies. A lot of people don't know that one sheriff, a bunch of deputies. The one sheriff, the elected official down here, we call him the high sheriff. He is the main sheriff. The rest are just deputies. So with that being said, high John, you get it now, is the main John. He is the spirit and he directs the roots. So you can use John the Conqueror root in your workings to um, to help enhance and things like that. But High John the Conqueror, the spirit, is the one that will that you petition to go out and do different workings for you. This is John the Conqueror root. On that altar right there where that candle's burning is High John the Conqueror, the spirit. Probably not taught you more in eight minutes than any of those books you've got. <clears throat> now, let's get into how to correctly petition High John the Conqueror, the Spirit. <sighs> One, we've got to just do away with everything we read so far. Guys, I know a lot of times you guys have been taught, you've read, you have read blogs, watch videos where you have been led to believe that all these spirits are just fluffy and they love you. And even the ones that you know are warriors, you know that they are tricksters. Well, they, they're going to be nice to you because you read that they like rum. You read that they like whiskey. You read this, you read that. And if you, if I just put it there and tell them what I want, well, they just going to do it, right? That's what you think. You have been led to believe that all spirit work is just strictly transactional. If I do this, they're going to do that. Guys, that is not the case. By a long shot. And we have been led to believe that because we live in a world that is so antisocial. The world is so antisocial to the point where we don't know how to build relationships and that is what has to happen, not just with High John, but with any spirit. You've got to build a relationship. As with any, 99.9% .9 of the hoodoo books and materials out there, it's only half of the equation. Y'all are putting up altars and leaving out offerings like y'all trying to trap a squirrel. Like I'm just gonna wait till you get here. That's only half of it. When you put out an offering or you set up an altar, yeah, you're trying to call the spirit there, but the other half is building a relationship with it. Him, her, whomever. You build the relationship. I asked someone 
What do you think the cornerstones of any relationship would be or should be? <clears throat> and this person said, well, I really don't know because I don't really engage with people unless I have to. And that is part of the problem nowadays. It is so hard for a true introvert, not just to work within these religions, but to engage with the spirit because relationship or interpersonal skills are lacking nowadays. But don't worry, I got you. It is easy. One, you want to be consistent. When you build that altar or when you approach that spirit, be consistent. Let them know, hey, I'm going to be here. <coughs> Excuse me. All the time. Well, not all the time, but every Wednesday. And no, I'm not talking about any Mars day or Vin no. I'm just going to be here Wednesday at 7 o'clock and I'm going to talk to you. Here's your offerings, but this is who I am. Introduce yourself. For one, the cornerstones of any type of social interaction are also mutual experience. John, Hi, John the Conqueror. If you know any of the stories, he loves playing tricks, <laughs> especially against white people. He loves that. So if you have a situation against someone of that particular race, I already said white people. <laughs> that's something he can get down with. Okay. Tell jokes. Even if you don't, even if it's not a white person, tell, tell them a story about something that happened at your job or something like that. Get his attention. You probably can't see because it's dark and it's far away and this camera kind of blurs the background or this lens does. But I have a deck of cards. He loves games of chance. He loves games of chance. You can put some dice over there. Common interests. <clears throat> Another cornerstone of relationship building is also, at times, quid pro quo, something for something. Once you got his attention, which you can tell, candle flickering, whatever, you can tell when he's there. But you know what? I got, I got this nice whiskey here. That's not whiskey. <laughs> like, I have this nice whiskey here. Hey, if you can see fit to do this for me, I, I pour us a couple of glasses, okay? And that is the last cornerstone, which is just mutual respect and admiration. When I work with Hi John, I don't just pour him a glass of whiskey. No, we toasting together. And we, too, we toasting it up. Like, man, you know, it's plenty more where this came from, especially if you come through. Converse. Conversate with whichever one. Talk to the spirit. Get to know them. Start asking like, hey, John, I really can't tell when you're here or not. Cause, so can you do me a favor and put, uh, I'm going to leave this glass of water here, put some bubbles in it for me. Let me know you're here. Stuff like that. It has, got to, it has got to be a back and forth. It has got to be. Now, while we're on, <laughs> we weren't on the subject of race, but I will back it back to that. For my, you know, my white brothers and sisters, it will be very hard for you to work with hi john and i'm just being honest it will because if you know or have heard any of the stories all he did was play tricks on white people and a lot of times he will still do that i'm not saying it is impossible for you to work with him i'm just saying it'll be very hard because that's still who he is okay you may think, oh, no, John the Conqueror loves me. Meanwhile, he is playing. You know the type of trick that he will play? How many hoodoo books have you bought? How many courses have you bought? How many videos and, 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 and everything have you spent time into for minimal results? You've been hoodwinked. That's some of his bamboozlement, his tomfoolery, his skullduggery. All of that, okay? <clears throat> if you persist and, and can take all of that that he dishes out, then maybe you'll see some movement going forward. And also, guys, you know, to my melanated brothers and sisters, it might be the same thing. A lot of times, Hi John wants to know where your heart is. If you keep bothering him about some of the most mundane stuff, like don't ask Hi John to show himself by cutting your lights on when you know you can walk over there and flip the switch. He is not going to like that. We have got to get out of the mindset that these are not living and thinking entities. 
They get mad. They get sad. They get lonely, just like we do. And they also know when people are just trying to use them. That's why it's important. That's why I spent so much time with you talking about building a relationship. Because let's say he likes whiskey and he, you know, he likes whatever. If you, you watching this video, was walking down the street and let's say your favorite thing in the world is pancakes. And here comes somebody with a hot, I got you some pancakes. You be like, man, if you don't get up out of here, I don't know you. Spirits feel the same way. And I don't care who, look, it can be Oshun, because y'all love Oshun. It can be um, Ogu Farai. It can, it can be, don't go on anybody, any spirits. Don't, don't try with Apollo spirits. It can be any spirits. If they don't know you, why they going, even if they do take your offering, there's nothing to say that they're going to do what you ask. No matter how wonderful your petition paper is, no matter how beautiful your, beautifully your candle is dressed, if you have not built that relationship, there's nothing to say they have to do it because you wouldn't do it. If someone that you didn't know walked up offering you something, you know, unless you would. <laughs> I need to stop making jokes about crack because it is not funny at all. <clears throat> but y'all, y'all get where I was going. So now we're, we're talking. We have talked about high John, how to build a relationship, how important it is. Let's talk about John the Conqueror root. John the Conqueror root. I like to call it a battery. No matter what you're doing, John the Conqueror Root can power it and make it that much better. <clears throat> John the Conqueror Root, if you, let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, if you've got enough spiritual juice, like, <laughs> let's just say your spiritual, if your spiritual power was gasoline and you couldn't power an ant's motorcycle to go around a raindrop, you add some John the Conqueror root, you might get up from a one up to like a four or five. It does boost the effectiveness and the spiritual output of things. Um, <clears throat> where, do, where do I come up with this stuff? <laughs> it is good as an incense. It is good powdered. It is good as the whole as the whole root. Now. To go from John the Conqueror root to High John the Conqueror, you dress it in whiskey and pray over it. Now, at that point, never, ever, ever try to break off a piece, file it down for powder or anything like that. Because at that point, it is now High John the Conqueror and he does not like that. So once you've blessed it and consecrated it, do not use it as if it's a regular root again because it is not. Now it's just the deputy. You don't ask the high sheriff to do certain things. Now, with that being said, one thing that I like to use High John the Conqueror for is if I have some ingredients that don't play well together. For instance, um, calamus is a controlling root, so is licorice, but they don't play well together. Calamus is more forcefully controlling, whereas licorice is more coercive. Calamus tells you what to do. Licorice will ask you to do something. And the energies are different. As such, they don't like to be together. But if I add High John with it, him being the high sheriff, he can kind of like yoke them together and control them to get whatever it is I need done, done. Does that make sense? Him being the high sheriff, he can rein some energies in and push them towards a common goal, even if they don't normally play well together. Whew. Look, we're at the 20 minute mark. I need to get up out of here. I feel like I've given y'all a lot of information. If you've gotten any value out of this, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit and hit that bell so you know when I am going to drop another video and especially when I'm going live. <clears throat> and as promised, this upcoming Saturday, I am going to do a live webinar and I'm going to drop the link both in the community tab, but also in the, um, in the comment section of this video. Okay. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate you sitting here with me and happy Hoodoo Sunday.
profit out.